The Supreme Court will soon decide whether to restrict access to an abortion pill. It's the first abortion case to reach the high court since Roe v. Wade was overturned in 2022. Justices will also review another major case involving January 6 defendants and whether they can be charged with obstruction of an official proceeding, something that is also a part of former President Donald Trump's indictment. CBS News Chief Legal Correspondent Jan Crawford reports. This case could have a tremendous impact on how and at what point in their pregnancy women can get the so-called abortion pill, even in states where abortion is legal. Now, a federal appeals court said that the FDA was wrong in how it approved the drug mifepristone for abortions up to 10 weeks and said that women didn't need to see a doctor in person to get it. Those lower court decisions are on hold, so the pill will remain available while the case plays out. Now, the second big case that the court agreed to hear today could affect hundreds of January 6 defendants, another whole separate issue entirely, including former President Trump. Now, these defendants are facing a number of other charges, but this one is under a federal law that prohibits obstructing any official proceeding. That sounds pretty clear. On January 6, certifying the election was an official proceeding, uh, but the defendants say no. That law is talking about people destroying documents and records and that it shouldn't apply to us. Now, if the court agrees that prosecutors went too far, it would also impact the special counsel's election interference case against Trump. Two of the four charges against him could get cut or it could delay that trial. John? Jane Crawford in Washington. Thank you. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. She's also a professor at Loyola Law School in California. Jessica, we'll get to uh, the thicket of questions surrounding obstruction in a minute, but uh, the Supreme Court is first going to uh, answer this question of access to mifepristone, uh, also known as the abortion pill. What's at stake in that case in terms of the constitutional issues, leaving aside the access question? So this is actually a statutory question. The Supreme Court has already decided when it overturned Roe v. Wade that there is no federal constitutional protection for the ability to obtain an abortion. This Mifepristone case is all about abortion and it's not at all about abortion. And I know that sounds strange, but it's about whether or not the FDA was correct when it made it easier for women to obtain Mifepristone. Let's remember that's one of the two abortion pills and more than 50% of women who obtain abortions in this country do use the abortion pills. That's the way that it's all about abortion, but it really legally is about the power of an executive agency to make this type of determination and the potential power of judges to second guess those determinations. So I'm just gonna grab onto that for a second because you and I have talked before about this question of when Congress gives power to agencies can agencies just run wild and do whatever they feel like, or are they bound by text of the legislation or uh, as something else? So that's essentially what you're saying. It's that same old fight. So I, you're bringing up this really important issue that the Supreme Court is going to tackle about the major questions doctrine and how much guidance you, Congress, have to give to agencies. In this case, I actually think it's narrower. It's did the FDA properly exercise its authority? The authority that I think unquestionably was granted mm. to that agency when it said, yes, let's make it easier to obtain mifepristone. You don't have to go in to have a doctor's appointment. You can take it up to 10 weeks of pregnancy instead of seven weeks of pregnancy. And what we're really looking at is, did the FDA follow the proper procedures? But you're exactly mm. right that what's happening in maybe not the background, but what's happening in this case and in other cases that the court will tackle this term head on is this question of how much guidance does Congress have to provide executive agencies? It's major questions doctrine is the Chevron deference right. issue that we'll talk about later in the term as well. Right. So not, not a question of did they make up an authority, but did they exercise the authority they had? Okay, got it. Now, obstruction. What's it? What's at issue here with the with the January 6 cases about obstructing a, a federal proceeding. So exactly as Jan Crawford reported, this is a law, this federal obstruction law, and it talks about corruptly impeding or obstructing an official proceeding. It was born out of Enron, and it really was meant to protect against white collar malfeasance. The typical case does involve 
trying to prevent somebody from destroying documents or tampering with witnesses. This was a federal statute that prosecutors kind of latched onto as easier in these January 6 cases than more difficult cases like incitement, difficult when it comes to the First Amendment, or sedition or seditious conspiracy, difficult politically, also difficult for other reasons. Now the question is, do you have to have tried to do something like shred a document or actually tamper with a witness or other evidence, or can it be trying to prevent Congress from certifying the election. The other question with respect to these statutes is, did the people being charged under it form the corrupt intent, or did they really think this election was stolen? CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. Thanks so much, Jessica.